क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स I welcome you all to this video. We are with the last chapter of microwave engineering. The chapter is titled radar engineering, and this is the topic adding certain more information to the pulsed radar system. We started to see the details of radar engineering with introduction to the term radar, the radio detection and ranging, and the block schematics were introduced for the simple types. Very first of all, using the two different antennas for the transmission and receiver sections there and if the same antenna can be used with the help of the duplexer system it can be minimized there so now after the brief classification into the two types that is for the continuous wave also called as the doppler radar here and the second type the pulse radar so in this video we are going to add certain more details the block schematics we shall be discussing for the pulse radar system here in the previous video we have also derived the range equation for the maximum value so that we can have the detection of the target made possible and also discuss the condition of unambiguousness here so let us begin with the topic so here we start with the topic the topic is titled pulsed radar system so from the name of the topic you can guess that in this radar system the transmitter section will be transmitting the signal into the pulse form which have the modulation with respect to the sign type of the waves here so for such a pulsed signal we have the previous derivation also let us see the details of various blocks that are responsible to complete the operation of the pulse radar system so let us have the block diagram first of all so this is the block diagram for the pulse radar system we can start to learn the various details for the blocks in world from this particular position so let us say this is the first block the first block is named by trigger source here so the trigger source is basically the source of pulses for the modulation purpose here so therefore you can see here some pulses have been represented that is provided by the trigger source so this is the initial block here next to that we have the pulse modulator the pulse modulator is providing the rectangular voltage pulses which act as the supply voltage to the output tube here so this is the second block which is making the possibility of sine wave modulated with the help of the pulses there so here upon we have the representation of the pulses and inside there it is the sine wave here so for one cycle we have the t on region and t off region represented here so this is nothing but 1 upon prf prf standing for the pulse repetition frequency so as into the previous video we have seen the condition that when one pulse is transmitted from the transmitter section the sufficient amount of the time length should be provided so that the pulse is reflected back from the target it is received and then detected and after that process there should be the transmission of the second pulse here so now after the pulse modulator we have the third block here so let us say this is the second block we have discussed and this is the third block from the pulse modulator with the help of the wave guide which is the transmission line it is connected to the output tube here the output tube can be the magnetron oscillator or it can be also the klystron amplifier the traveling wave tube amplifier converted to the oscillators by just providing the feedback from the output section here or it can also be the cross field amplifiers so these are all the devices we have learned in our initial chapters the chapter number 2 and 3 most possibly working on to the vacuum tube platform these are called as the microwave tubes here now when the pulse radar system is working for the low power application so in that case 
the use of impact diode and the trapped diode is also made possible as they have the low power handling capacity here. So this is the third block output tube here. Now from the output tube, the generated signal. So here it is the output tube giving us the microwave signal. So inside there it is what you see. It is the sine wave because of this output tube microwave source here. And because of the pulse modulator, we have the upper envelope you can see here. So now this output is fed as input to the next block. The next block is represented here. The fourth block I can say and it is the duplexer. So duplexer is provided with only one antenna which can be working as transmitting as well as receiving antenna and both the transmission and receiving operations are isolated from each other. There are the chances that the receiver section may have got damaged due to the high power associated with the transmitter section but it is the duty of the duplexer to isolate this one and to save the receiver section from the damage because of the high power associated with the transmitter. Now next to the fourth block that it is duplexer we require the receiver to be there for the pulse radar system here. So now these complete blocks right from the low noise RF amplifier mixer along with the local oscillator, IF amplifier and detector. This forms the receiver here. So let us say this is the complete block number 5. And I can name here the first block in the receiver section to be 5.1, the low noise RF amplifier. The low noise RF amplifier can be made possible with the help of the parametric amplifier or a TWT amplifier. The TWT standing for the traveling wave tube that we have covered into the second chapter there. So now the low noise amplifier will be providing the amplified signal at the low levels and the frequency can be represented for the RF case F suffix RF here which is fed as input to the another block that involves two sub blocks here that it is a mixer and the local oscillator here. So let us say this is 5.2 mixer and local oscillator. From the local oscillator one signal is as fed input to the mixer. The frequency F sub X L O L O for the local oscillator. The known frequency value and here F sub X R F coming from the low noise RF amplifier section is given as input to the mixer here. The work of the mixer is to have the conversion of the RF signal output from this particular amplifier, low noise amplifier to be comparatively low value, the controlled value denoted by IF called as the intermediate frequency. So IF is equal to F sub X L O minus F sub X R F. So it is the difference of local oscillator known frequency minus this RF frequency coming from low noise RF amplifier. So after this block here, we have the next one to be the IF amplifier here. So I can treat this to be the 5.3 here. So in the IF amplifier, there it is amplification of this intermediate frequency made possible with the help of the mixer operation here and finally it is given as input to the detector that can be regarded as block number 5.4. So it is a part of the receiver. So the receiver these blocks are showing us the super heterodyne receiver structure here. Now in the detector block here there it is the use of short key barrier diode we can have the operation we can have the abbreviation short key barrier diode capital S capital B for barrier and D for diode short key barrier diode. The work of short key barrier diode is to have the extraction of the pulse modulation from the IF amplifier output. So here it is the pulse amplification process done into the transmission section. So above is the transmission section 
and here it is the uh, receiving section here so i can get it dashed here this is the transmission section this is the receiving section duplexer works for both of them here and here it is the radar display with the help of the local oscillator which is connected to the waveguide connections here so the information can be there displayed onto the radar for the range angle and that of the velocity here so what we talk about the range angle and velocity the range is basically the distance right from the source to that of the target here so for the range we have also derived the equation in the topic titled radar range equation so now next to that the angle information that we generally talk about the azimuth and the elevation information so the azimuth angle is the angle into the horizontal plane giving us the direction in terms of the north south east or west whereas elevation is the angle into the vertical plane with respect to the ground plane how much height it has attained from the ground station generally for the satellite engineering the satellite communication we go for so these informations are to be obtained and to be represented onto the radar displays along with the velocity information so this was all about with respect to the pulse radar system by the next lecture we shall be discussing few of the general principles associated with the radar receivers here so i hope the things are very very clear and you are definitely getting benefited with the knowledge we share for this subject microwave engineering for more such details and the knowledge if you want to have you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you